I'm currently working with a student who is making the transition from fashion design to surface design. So we're working through different methods and software she'll need as a textile designer. One of the things I know she'll need to do is an art production sheet, which is basically like a tech pack for a print. And I'm sure some of you could use this information as well. So that's what we're talking about in today's video. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikkel Drew Pelham. I talk about digital fashion design software and communication on this channel. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Let's start with what is the art production sheet? The art production sheet, also known as a pitch sheet, is created after your pattern is complete and ready to be sent to a printer for production. And like a garment tech pack, you have to tell the printer how big something is, what colors, specify color positions. If it's a place graphic, you need to give them exact dimensions for the placement. The art production sheet is your instruction manual for your print or graphic so that the printer knows exactly what and how they need to create the graphic for you. So what should go on that sheet? Most artwork these days is digital and you can send it electronically. And most vendors work with Illustrator and Photoshop files pretty often at this point, so you won't have to worry about converting your files. You can usually leave them in the native Adobe format unless the printer specifically asks for them in a different format. When I used to create art and art production sheets, I would send the artwork in multiple formats, Photoshop, EPS, uh, TIFF, PDF, knowing that they'll be able to at least open one of those. But this was also when we were mailing CDs to our vendors, so you can imagine how long ago that was. At this point, I would say it's probably safe to keep it in the native format, but it's always good to just ask your printer what they prefer. You wanna make sure that you indicate the overall size of your graphic or repeat. And although it would seem like this is unnecessary, Particularly since most people will send digital artwork, the printer just wants to double check, and you should too, that what they are opening on their screen hasn't changed size because of differences in versions of the software or corruption when it traveled through cyberspace from one inbox to another. I know that may seem kind of silly in this day and age, but it can happen. So just indicate the size of your art. And usually that's a very simple task. If your art is in Illustrator, you can just click on the art and get your dimensions from the transform panel. And in Photoshop, you can get it from the canvas size. And don't worry if you've designed a graphic and it's not completely square. You're adding overall dimensions, so the height of your graphic and the overall width. There are a lot of different ways to print a pattern or graphic. Screen print, heat transfer, or what some refer to as a paper print, sublimation. So you wanna make sure you specify the type of printing you wanna use for this particular artwork. And sometimes you don't know. So if you have an example, you can send a cutting of the type of printing to the printer and say you want that particular quality. You can describe the hand and the look of the print you're going for. And keep in mind that different types of printing have different costs, some more expensive than others. So it may also come down to the cost. And then there's also special techniques, which we usually indicate once we get into the color positions. But if you wanna do a puff print, lenticular, silicone on specific colors, you'll wanna in indicate that as well. This is probably the most important. Here is when you specify colors and color positions and specify colors for other color ways. The first thing you need to identify is how many colors are in your pattern. Each one of those colors will represent a color position or a screen. So for each color in your print or your graphic, the printer has to create a screen or a roller if it's an all over print. Next, you're going to draw lines to indicate each color. This will also help to indicate the position of that color in your print. Now, 
now that you've decided number of colors and pointed out where those colors are, you'll create a chart and specify the color for each of those color positions. And normally you'll start with the ground color, which is usually white because it's much easier to print onto a white ground. And then each position after that will usually be largest coverage to smallest coverage. So for example, for this print, the first box will be the ground, which will be white. The next box will be the next most prominent color, which is the color that covers most of the ground. That's the dark brown color. And then the blue, orange, yellow, and lighter brown. And for a print like this, where it seems like there's about the same amount of blue as orange, it's fine if one or the other is first. Show a little box with the color, and underneath that box, you'll specify the exact color. And most people will specify a Pantone. It's the most widely used color system, probably most well-known and easily accessible. Then, if you have additional colorways, you'll list them underneath that. Swap out the colors and specify the new Pantones. Now, there's two things you should note when you create colorways. The first is that the new color you're choosing will be the new color for that position. So everywhere the original color was in the first colorway, it's also going to be in the same position for the second colorway. I just wanted to say that because sometimes my students like to get creative and color the prints a little differently. If you do that, you'd be paying for an entirely new print, not another colorway. The second thing is that the depth or saturation of the color that you pick for the new colorway has to match what you chose for the original. For instance, if I have a pale pink color as position one for the first colorway, when I pick colors for the second colorway, it can't be black or like a deep purple. It needs to be something that's also lightly colored. And unfortunately, I don't know the exact reason why, Perhaps someone who is more experienced with printing can put a comment below to explain this more in depth. But I do remember this happening once when I was on the job and we had to repitch our colors because someone put a dark color in the position that was a light color. I know it has something to do with the way the screens are made when they're burned or engraved, but that's the extent of my knowledge on that. Those are really the main things you want to put on your production sheet. Other things that should be there are, you know, brand name, your name, if you're the designer of the print, so they know who they have to come to if they have questions, um, the base fabric, maybe the season. But those four things I previously discussed are what the printer is mainly going to be looking for. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.